Hello all, Brenda Smith here with you today and I am going to show you how you can use your Silhouette uh, electronic die cutter to make use of your digital supplies in hybrid projects. I'm going to show you a couple different ways to do that and the first thing I'm going to do is to show you how to do a print and cut on um, some word art elements. So Tracy Reed has her March Pocket Life collection in the Sweet Shop Designs right now and it is so cute and I wanted to print out some of these just to use on uh, my pages that I'll be making in the next couple of weeks. So I wanted to show you in the um, Silhouette Studio it defaults to a 12 by 12 canvas but since I don't have a wide format printer I need to change that to an 8.5 by 11. So up here um, this icon here is the design page settings window and you can click on the arrow here in this pull down menu and there are many different sizes that you can choose I'm just gonna go ahead and choose letter 8.5 by 11 and I have the silhouette cameo so my cutting mat is 12 by 12 and this is the 8.5 by 11 on that 12 by 12 I'm gonna go back to my stickers um, and pull them directly into the program just like that. The next thing that we need to do is add the registration marks. What registration marks are is a way for um, the Silhouette Studio to tell your printer where those designs are on your printed paper so that they can cut them out accurately. So um, the registration marks window is this icon here. You'll want to click on that and this pull down menu just select according to the type of silhouette you have. And as you can see, the registration marks are cutting into the sticker design. So I'm going to do my best to adjust those. I'm going to make them just a little bit smaller. And they're already as far apart as can possibly be from each other. So I'm still going to have to adjust um, the size of these stickers. So I'm just going to click at the corner so it resizes proportionately and then just kind of try to adjust it. I try to keep them out of these hash marks here in the corners. I don't know if that's uh, necessary, but I do it just because it looks like they shouldn't be in there, so <laughs> I try to keep them out of there. Okay, so that looks good. They're out of the hash marks. Um, they're away from the, from the registration marks. So the next thing that we are going to do is go up uh, to the trace window. And this is the trace window here. So click on that icon and then you'll want to select trace area by clicking on this. So we are going to just draw a box around the things that we want to trace. I don't need to trace those words at the bottom that say the Pocket Life March 2015 stickers, so I'm just selecting all of the actual um, word art. And there you go. Turn off the high pass filter, we don't need that, and then we're going to turn the threshold up all the way to 100. And you can see those are the general outlines of your sticker shapes. And we are going to trace outer edge. So just so you can see what it looks like, you can see the red lines around the stickers. But let's move those stickers out so you can see that you're getting a clean, uh, nice cut. So I'm going to Command Z and put those stickers back. And this is what it looks like. So the first thing that you will do um, now that you've got this all done is you will send to your printer. I don't have a printer hooked up to this computer currently, but I'm going to do this later on my other computer and um, show you the results. But what you can do is just go ahead and adjust your settings and then go ahead and send it to your printer. Okay, so now that you have it all printed out, we are going to go ahead and take that 8.5 by 11 sheet and stick it onto your Cameo mat, just as is shown here in the studio. You want it to be aligned exactly the same way. Make sure that um, you know the arrow, your designs are in the correct spot according to the marks on the mat. So once we do that, we're going to go ahead and send it to the silhouette. Again, I don't have the silhouette on this computer, but you'll click on this and you can adjust your cut settings. Depending on what kind of paper you use to print out your things, you will want to adjust uh, the depth that your, um, that your machine cuts at. So I use Canon matte photo paper and it is very cardstock like, so I just choose cardstock. And I just do standard cut mode 
and you can turn off the advanced, you don't really need those. And then when you go ahead and send to your silhouette, it's going to automatically detect your registration marks for you. So it's going to just suck in the mat and then try to read those registration mat marks and then it will know accordingly where to cut. If it spits it back out at you, it's trying to tell you that it is unable to read the registration marks and then you can kind of get the idea that something went wrong. But usually um, it will read them with ease. So you can go ahead and get those cut out and I will show you what mine look like when I'm all done. So these are my pieces all cut out. I'm actually just going to set them aside. I like to use them all throughout the month on my pages, but I have a project in mind for today that I'd like to show you how to make in just a few minutes here. So that is one way to print out the stickers from the Tracy Reed collection. Another thing that you can do, if you're not sure that you want to use all of the stickers and you just want to kind of um, pick and choose your own, you can just select the individual PNG files and drag them onto your canvas and silhouette. And then you can resize accordingly if you need them to be bigger or smaller. Um, you have a lot of flexibility in this way, so um, I like doing this every once in a while. You don't have to be limited to just stickers. You can um, do journal cards of any size. You can do embellishments. Go ahead and add this tag here. And then you'll just follow the same process. You know, fill up this sheet as big as you want. If you don't need a whole 8.5 by 11, you can do a 4 by 6 and print up on a 4 by 6 piece of paper instead. Um, and save a little bit of extra paper that way. But just go ahead and, and follow the same process that we discussed previously where you will do the trace lines and the registration marks. So that is another way. I am going to show you a third and final way that you can um, use your silhouette for hybrid projects. I'm going to go ahead and just close this since I um, will not be printing it up. And I'm going to show you how we can kind of create an idea for a hybrid layout within the studio. So I'm going to do automatic, that's the 12 by 12 size, um, because I want to scrap a 12 by 12 hybrid layout. Now, as I said before, I don't have a wide format printer, so I'll need to make sure that all my elements are actually smaller than um, 11 inches in any one direction just because um, you know I need to be able to print them out on an 8.5 by 11 sheet. So I'm going to go into my library and um, find a file that will work for this. So, so I spared you the agony of watching me dig through my entire library for the perfect shape and I came across this one that I think I want to use. This is Scalloped Heart and I bought this from the Silhouette store so uh, it was no more than a dollar. Okay, and as you can see, it comes in these um, pieces here. This is intended to be the background, and then you will put all of these pieces onto the background just to piece it together. It's, um, as you can see, they have a little bit of separation in between the pieces here, but that's just so that it can cut easily and not necessarily that it's designed to be that way. The pieces are all designed to be um, nesting next to each other. So um, I'm going to keep that in mind when I resize that there will not be this space in between. So I am going to go ahead and just keep resizing until I feel content. Um, let's drag this down to my canvas and see how it looks. Uh, that's almost there, but I think I want it to be a little bit bigger. I want it to take up a large part of my 12 by 12 page. So um, just a little bit more. Okay, and so that looks pretty good to me. I'm going to go ahead and right click and ungroup just so I can have all of the individual pieces and this background here I'm gonna click on it and cut it and then I'm gonna open up a new file and paste it onto that file just by hitting command V so what I'm gonna do now is go back to that quilted heart file and I'm gonna open up the papers from Tracy's collection and just start adding them into my quilted heart here and all you have to do is just drag them from your folder and drop them into your shape. It's that easy. So um, bear with me for a minute while I just go ahead and place them in here. I think I want to go with this one here. And then maybe this one. I'll replace that one with the rainbow there and then do the red. 
And then I'm just going to repeat um, some that I've already done. So we've got the yellow. And then after that, these little, ooh, little triangles. And then the, this one. And then the stripes. And lastly, the red. Okay, I think that looks great. And for the middle, for the heart there, I think I'm gonna go ahead and add a photo that I have of my daughter. And I tried adding a photo earlier and for some reason it's adding it upside down. So I just went ahead and um, turned my photo upside down. I don't know why it was doing that. So if anybody knows, please leave a comment and let us know, but I'm not really sure. So this was my workaround. And this is ready to be sent to be printed. And because uh, this sheet is bigger than 8.5 by 11, I have to make two different files um, to print on. So I just opened up another piece of paper here. That's 8.5 by 11. And I'm going to select just by clicking, oops, just by clicking and then holding down shift as I select more. And I'm going to select the photo as well. I'm just going to copy and then go to 12 and then Command-V to paste. So I went ahead and just rearranged these onto my canvas so they fit within the registration marks there. So I have this page here and this page here. And as you can tell, they're not very fitted, so I am wasting a bit of paper, but in this instance, it's okay. I only paid $4 for a pack of 50 of these papers, so I'm not losing much. So I did go ahead and hook up my printer, so I'm going to show you how to proceed with that. I just click on this little printer icon up here. Um, this is the printer that I'm printing with. I'm going to go in just to check on the um, print settings just to make sure they are what I want. So I'm going to go to quality and media. See it's set to plain paper. I want it to be actually the matte photo paper. And standard print quality is, I find is okay. There is one more thing I want to show you before we send off to print. If you go up here to the file and then you go to print page setup, there's a setting here that's the scale and I like to keep it at around 98% just because my printer has a tendency to cut off the edges sometimes. So I want to make sure that these little registration marks um, on the bottom get included as well because otherwise it messes up the whole print and cut. So. I did it at 98% and we are going to go ahead and just send it to be printed now. So I have it all printed out and what I want to do now is go ahead and just click on this little icon up here to send it to the silhouette. And I am going to try to get it to detect my registration marks. I tried earlier and as you can see it failed so let's figure this out. So that actually worked this time. Um, my reason I think that it wasn't cutting before was I loaded the mat a little bit too far to the left so that when it was sucking in the mat, the little um, lens that it uses to detect the registration marks was covered up and was unable to see the registration marks. So um, I fixed that, I adjusted the mat, and it worked this time. So these are my pieces and this is what they look like cut out. And this is what it looks like all assembled. I just added some machine stitching, hand stitching, some of the stickers from the same Tracy Reed collection, some enamel dots, gold thickers, and a little bit of journaling. And I think it looks great. I love it. I think it's very fitting of my daughter. And I love that it was fast and easy. This only took me about an hour, which is pretty quick for me. And I hope that I have shown you today that hybrid uh, can be for anybody, that it is not difficult, and that it can actually be really easy and quick. And I do hope that you guys will be encouraged to try some hybrid projects of your own. Thank you so much for stopping by and watching this video, and I look forward to seeing what you'll make.